All right, we're back in the lab again. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about channel filters, uh, look at the channel maps. Um, I've got the demo survey loaded up again. We'll just kind of stick with this, this one survey. That way it has some consistency to the look uh, for these videos. The channel map does what it says. It's going to give you basically a map outline of where your channels are being heard as you're going through taking your samples uh, for your survey. And you're going to come back and you enable this map and kind of show you where your over, overlaps are for your channels. And it also gives you a pretty good idea where your overlay is on your APs, uh, which is a, you know, good information to have when you're looking at roaming issues uh, from one access point to another from your clients. To enable the channel map, we're going to go to the menu, uh, which is the three little lines up here at the top. And you're going to get your filter options menu that will open up. Um, right now I've got tap points enabled, but I'm going to turn those off and I'm going to enable channel uh, 2.4 gigahertz. We'll take a look at that right now. Uh, when you look at your channel map, you want to have the either 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. Or you can have both, but really I like to look at them independently. So we'll do 2.4. You need to have the signal DVM enabled, and you need to have access points enabled. Additionally, if you want to look at everything at once for that particular channel, you need to make sure when you look at your subfilter for your access points, you need to make sure all your access points are checked. Same is true for your signal strength DVM. Uh, you need to make sure your signal strength is enabled. Now, you know, as we talked about in other videos, if you've determined uh, for your own needs, your wireless network needs to have a signal strength of 75, 85 dB, and whatever the case is, you can turn some of these off and it will reflect accordingly. Uh, but for this example, we're just going to turn everything on and we're going to look just at channel 2.4. Uh, if you look at the subfilter there, I've got channels 1, 3, and, or excuse me, I've got channels 1, 6, and 11 enabled. Uh, I know that's what these access points were configured for for this survey, so I've just got those turned on. If you had everything turned on, you know, it's still, so I'm going to show you what, uh, what you picked up when you took samples. Alright, so first glance here, you know, kind of looks like a mess a little bit. You got a lot of overlay and stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, what you can see real quick though is, we've got channel 11, you can kind of follow the outline for that. You know, get channel 1 over here, you can, you know, if you really look, maybe you zoom in or whatever, you can kind of follow that. Uh, but what you'll find out is you're a lot better off if you look at your channels individually. So I'm going to go back in here, and I'm just going to enable channel 1. I'm going to turn signal 11 off. And we'll come right back out here now. You know, I'm looking at channel 1 by itself. Much easier to look at. I can see pretty much this whole end of this building, you know, is being seen off this access point. It's all running on channel 1. You know, simple enough. I'm going to come back in here now. Let's just go ahead and add channel 6 back on here. So we've got channels 1 and 6 turned on. And from that, nice thing about this, especially if you're looking at that, your access points that are close to each other, not only do I see my channels are good, I'm on different channels. i got channel 1 here and channel 6 here. What's good about this though is I see between these two access points, I can kind of see what my area is where these two access points overlap. So I know that you know my clients that are entering into this area right here, I, you know I should have pretty good roaming going on. Of course, there's a lot of other variables that you need to take into account uh, for roaming to occur properly. But at least as far as your signal strength is concerned, you know I can see that I've got a pretty large overlap area right here for my signal. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off channel uh, one. We'll look at channel six by itself. So you can see that a little bit better. Then I'll jump back in here one more time and we'll look at channel 11. And there that is. You can see what that looks like. Just like with the heat maps, um, again, we're not assuming anything. If you register a tap right here and that's on channel 11, that map's going to draw out there to that because we heard it. Um, if you happen to be down here and you could hear that access point all the way from there, this map would have drawn out and encompassed that area too, you know, and pick up the taps in between. Again, uh, like we talked about in some of the other videos, taking a lot of samples is important. The more samples you take, the better these maps turn out. Well, I should say the more accurate they turn out. They may not look a whole lot different as far as being pretty or anything along those lines, but the representation you get back out of the app is going to be much more accurate the more samples you take. That pretty much covers it for the channels. Uh, there's not a whole lot to it. You know, basically what you're looking for here is the tech. You know, I want to make sure I don't have 
overlapping access points on the same channel, obviously. Um, you know, it's well documented the non overlapping channels that you have to work with on 2.4 gigahertz, which is the ones that we're working with here. Um, you've got four access points. One of these just happens to be 5 gigahertz. If, uh, if these all had been 2.4 gigahertz access points, having all four of them this close together and in an area where they're all audible with each other, uh, we would have had to probably go in and turn some radios down or something like that because we would not have had four non overlapping channels we could have used in one space. Uh, but in this case, only three were 2.4, and there's a 5 gigahertz access point in here too. So we can take a look at that real quick. Um, if you go back into your menu, turn off 2.4, we'll turn on 5 gigahertz. Then you can see, I believe it's this one, uh, what the signals, you know, what the channel map looked like based on that. And this is run on channel 149. Uh, but the same stuff applies to the 5 gigahertz as it does to 2.4. You can come in and do your subfilters, and you can see on the 5 gigahertz, you've got all the channels to pick from uh, that you would expect. And everything is treated the same as it does on 2.4. There's not any different code in there for one or the other. Uh, 2.4 and 5 gigahertz works the same throughout the entire app, not just the survey. <clears throat> but that's pretty much it. Uh, that covers the channel map. Thank you.